Hello folks, and welcome to a new Let's Play. This is Dragon Quest 3. I'm your Game Master Darius, and this is actually the first game I had ever played in the Dragon Quest series. Not this port, that's relegated to the Dragon Quest version for Game Boy Color, which 
does have some changes from the SNES port. Very minor though. Uh, the only real big difference is, is that any of the monsters can drop medals which will allow you to access a dungeon that is separate from the SNES one. Other than that, compared to the NES version, oh boy, there are so many differences. You got a graphical overhaul, you got new music, you got a new class, you got a bunch of new weapons and armor. Personalities are different, which I'll go into when we get to that point. We can climb into wells, there's a bag added, which actively works as, an evolt, as a vault. Uh, some monsters have their stats changed, as well as different drops. In general, too, it's also just straight up faster to level up and power up in this game compared to the NES version. Does not mean it makes it any less difficult, because that just removes a little bit of the grind. A little bit. Trust me, Dragon Quest is still well known for its grind. Uh, there's also two big things in this version that are exclusive from the NES version. One is that monsters are animated, and that is huge because it adds so much more personality to the monsters. The second part is that there is a side thing called the Pachisi board, and we'll get into that, and it's one of the most fun things in this game. I'm going to remove my test log thing, and we'll start a new adventure. And we can have up to eight characters. I only need six. We'll be a dude. Mono Stereo. Now this was also one of the big things about this game. Right here. That changed how I really saw the, ga the game itself. Darius, heed my voice. It is I, the ruler of everything. Soon, Darius, you will stand before me as a great hero. But before that happens, I want to find out what ha what kind of person you are. Now answer me honestly. Are you ready? Yes. First, please tell me your real name. I I don't keep my real name secret. It's freaking Jesse. My name is Jesse. Which month were you born in? September. On the 2nd. Jesse, you were born of Virgo on September 2nd. I'd like to ask you some questions now. Don't think too much about the right answer. Just give me a quick, honest answer. It'll make it easier for me to learn about your personality. Well then, let us proceed. Would you rather have an incredibly powerful weapon than a few good companions? Oh, that's a tricky one. Nah, no, I do like my companions. Have you ever had a dream that you were able to fly? Actually, no. We believe that fortune tellers can predict the future. Some. A whole lot of them are hogwash. If you were reborn, would you prefer to be part of a royal family? God, no. You find it hard to refuse people's requests? Yeah. You tend to daydream or space out a lot? Yep. If you could grant just one wish, if I could grant you just one wish, would you be able to decide that wish right now? Yep. I think I understand your personality more. Now, let's see how you do with this. You've come here just to take the exam? Me too. But when I'm here, it feels entirely different. You think I should turn back? So you get different uh, events based on your answers to that quiz. If you're gonna leap down, form a line behind me. I'll spit it out, will it be yes or no? Finally, I'm gonna get to test my courage. If I can do this, I'll surely be able to do anything. What's up? If you can't wait for your turn, just jump from here. I'm scared. If I prove my courage, it doesn't mean if it doesn't mean anything if I'm dead, right? Correct. It really doesn't. Yeah, I think we should stop this and go back. Wanna turn back, eh? I understand. Well then, you can use these stairs. Yeah, you can pretty much just wait in line, jump ahead of the rest of them, or, like I do, because courage means very little if you're dead, leave. I feel as though I know what kind of person you are now. 
You tend to do everything at your own pace, so others see you as a calm, collected person. This is only your outer appearance. You're actually a very troubled person. Rather, you rarely open up to others, and this causes you to be very lonely. If you could just open yourself up, you'd find that your loneliness would diminish. You'll find a lifelong partner that would be there for you. Then, you wouldn't be so lonely anymore. This is your personality. Soon morning will come, and you will wake from your slumber. I look forward to meeting you again someday. It was Darius's 16th birthday. Darius, wake up, Darius. Darius, it's morning. Time to wake up. Today will be the first time that you've ever been to the castle. I do believe that I've raised up and prepared you as a strong young man for this very day. Hmm. I'ma steal my own shrink seed. So, quick breakdown of things. Uh, X allows you to interact and talk with people or search things. A opens up this menu. B is cancel. Y is, I actually don't quite recall, also acts as a cancel. R will allow us to have a map that opens up. L allows us to interact with things like X does. Moving and then start and select, I don't really remember what that was do. Die. We can talk. We got spells. In this case, we currently only have recall, which allows us to remember conversations we've just had. Here's a helpful tip. Press the Y button when someone is, is talking to you and you'll remember what they said. Very helpful because you can remember that later as you're traveling. Don't forget to use the Y button. Honey, can't you wait until your our child's... Oh, this is going into that intro bit. Interesting. Didn't know that part. Items. So each character will have multiple. Can carry 12 items. And then any excess you can toss into the bag. The bag, again, acts as a vault so that you can just carry as much of everything as you want. Search looks at the ground below you or in front of you. Info, you can look at our characters. And uh, I'll get into this in a second. Tactics allows us to restore all of our HP with magic of healing varieties from our party members, taking their MP with it. Equipped allows us to just equip our characters like so. Order changes the order of our party. Message speed, when you know, how fast your speeds go with your messages. Tidy bag, which takes everything from your party that's not equipped and puts it into the bags. And then sort bag, which just sorts your bag, de depending on the typing or alphabetically. Info. So, we play the hero. Uh, we are lonesome, which is saddening. But also, uh, depending on your personality, changes how your stats go up in level, which is neat. Strength affects how much damage you deal with your uh, spells, naturally. Agility will affect how fast you move in battle, like if you go first, and will also change your defense if you're going to dodge something. Stamina is effectively your vitality, how much HP you're going to be getting. It does not affect much anything else, sadly, but, you know, more stamina, more HP. Wisdom affects how much MP you get throughout the game. The higher your wisdom, the higher your MP. Now, I point this out because stamina is usually also the defense stat. That is pretty much more dependent on your armor, as far as I know. Uh, luck kind of affects a little bit of everything, from critical hits to items get, that get dropped in battle to whether or not you get affected by status ailments while in battle as well. And before anyone asks, no, the gender does not affect anything. Um, I have to double check something here. Look, uh, praise without a dealer. We'll get into that in a second. I didn't want to equip, I wanted to try to unequip. I have a theory. Nope. Okay. Never mind. Anyways, 
Let's go on our quest. To the castle gates. I meant to read that out, but I kind of... I've been testing things, so I've kind of been just railing the A button. I apologize if that ever happens. Now just head straight on into the castle. Don't forget your manners in front of the king. Now off you go. Now here's a fun fact. You can actually push past your mother. She will ask you several times if you want to just leave. And then you can just leave. And it's funny to me because then you don't get the blessing for the king. You don't get a couple of items to equip your, your dudes. You just leave. And then you can come back and the king will be very pissed off. Like, oh, about freaking time you came. I'm not going to do that. For the sake of brevity, mostly. Welcome, Darius, son of the hero Ortega. You must have already heard this from your mother by now, but your father, Ortega, met his death after falling into a volcano. It must have happened in the heat of a ba big battle. I hereby request that you follow in your father's footsteps. You will certainly fulfill Ortega's last wish by restoring peace to our world. You must defeat the Archfiend Baramos. His name remains unknown in the world of men, so you must not speak it. If things remain unchanged, the world will soon be destroyed by Baramos. You must prevent this at all costs. Darius, you must defeat Baramos. Though I fear you may suffer your father's fate if you do, do, do this task alone. You can find some very reliable companions at Ruda's Tavern. And just receive some money, some weapons, and armor. Godspeed, Darius. Good luck. Battling alone is dangerous. You must go to Ruda's Tavern on the edge of town and find some good companions. I mean, I'm not going to talk to the guards. They're the guards. These ones are, anyways. Loot. Foxy. Nothing particular. Hello. If you follow the coastline of the castle, you'll see a cave on the promontory. Brave hero, please restore peace to the world once again. I'll see what I can do. Now, much like before, any seeds that I find, I will be using uh, pretty much outside of combat, or outside of the recording, just so as I can get the maximum amount. But, for the most part, any of the stat ones, like strength and luck, will increase your stat by 1 to 4. 1 to 4, 1 to 3, 1 to 2. I'll look into that really quick. But, uh, the ones that increase your HP and your MP will increase the, that stat by 1 to 6. Kind of a bigger deal. We cannot open the red doors just yet. I, you bastard, move it away from me. The thief Pakota has once wrecked havoc in our town is now in jail. The thief gate is easily open any door with a simple lock. We can get to many different places with it. But for a fun fact, Game Boy Color version, he is far more lewd sounding. Like, oh, I can get into this and that. <laughs> Have we had a chance to meet our princess yet? I believe she's over in the courtyard right now. I'm not allowed to leave this castle town because of Baramos. Can't take it anymore. Every day is the same here. I tried to sneak it out once, but my father ended up catching me. Oh no, how dare he make sure you're safe in the castle and start being attacked by slimes. I became a soldier here because I yearned to see the hero Ortega. But then Ortega passed away. No, Ortega could never have died so easily. He must still be alive somewhere. I just know it. Glad you know so much, sir. Hello. This is a jail. To talk to a prisoner, just speak to them through the bars. Damn it. I'm the infamous thief Pakota. How could I let some old man steal my key? Where is he, you ask? He lives in that Jimmy Tower. If only I still had the thief key. Eh, but it wouldn't help me get these jail doors open. I also have this little pathway. This is a shortcut to another location. We cannot go that way yet. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry. The music is so good. Even the J Game Boy Color version of this music is so good, man. Freaking love it. It's iconic. 
Ah. Apparently, there's a mountain cave that leads to the Jimmy Tower. I'm not saying it's true, but everyone else says the same thing. And of course, I'll loot from the barrels. Antidote herb heals poison. A small metal. Oh boy, that starts. We can't open that just yet. I can't open that just yet. So, real... <clears throat> I say real quick-like. Let us leaf. And actually gather our party before venturing forth. We got people to talk to. Don't worry, we'll talk to them. Actually, wait. First, around... 25 gold. Not bad. Now, this is pretty much the bread and butter of the game right here. Or at least the start of it. This is the bank. We can deposit our gold in quantities of thousands. If you're gonna take some companions along, I recommend a fighter, a priest, and a magician. If you want anyone that's not in Ruda's Tavern, just be sure to check up on the registration hall upstairs. I don't know, registration sounds like a big word for a drunk to say at the moment. Fighters attack nimbly while thieves are superb treasure hunters. Dealers are good at appraising items. Jesters just fool around. If you take a jester along, at least wait until you're stronger. While somewhat useless jesters can be very entertaining. Sages are chosen by God. Only those who can withstand their intense training exercises can become a sage. Meow. This is the Hall of Registration. I'll find who you're seeking and register that person. For registers, if you register somebody, you can pick them up at Ruda's Tavern. Let's register some people. So, this game, my god, this game, it's got a lot going for it. And one of the reasons why I love it so much is the ability to have different characters. Now, we are going to start making Eliza, who is one of my favorite D&D characters I've played. She is a female. We have several classes. Uh, you, your character, will always be a hero. They are fairly balanced and get far more powerful once they really mm, start leveling up. But for the most part, they're balanced, have a little bit of everything when it comes to magic. In fact, their spell slots, I, their spell slots, spell sheet is far larger um, than most of the other classes, but your MP is significantly less than the other spellcasting classes, so keep that in mind. Now, the warrior are pretty much strength and vitality beasts. They wield the heaviest armor and the biggest goddamn swords and axes in the game. They have no magic, but what they don't have in magic, they make up for in hit points. So, you know, pretty much your defense person, you'll probably want them in the front line. Then you have the fighter, which is very much a monk. They are unarmed, very fast, very strong, but they have very little in the way of defense, save for their agility. So, yeah, they're strong and no magic again, but you don't have to worry about their equipment because they're unarmed. The mage is, well, just that, they're a mage. High intelligence, good agility will be good for the defense. Uh, they are going to stack when it comes to their MP. So, you don't really have to worry about their MP too much. Uh, they have all of the more powerful spells that deal damage in the game. Let's put it that way. Uh, so, early on, they'll also learn stuff like Boom, Sizz, Frizzle, stuff like that that'll attack and do a lot of damage. The Cleric is the healer. Just straight up, they're the healer. They get more armor than the Mage does, and they do get some damaging spells, but their bread and butter is going to be healing, removing poison, removing paralysis, curses, all that fun stuff. And they do get some useful spells that just eject enemies from the uh, from the fight. Dealers, or merchants, depending on the version of the game you're playing. I high, high vitality with a pretty decent intelligence. Uh, they get a little bit of everything. They're kind of a knickknackery. They have a special ability that allows you to use them to identify an item. So you can, from the field, just go, oh, this does this thing. 
I personally don't really use them, but I think they became really popular when it came to the Torneco games, or when Torneco was introduced in Dragon Quest. Which reminds me, I really gotta get into Dragon Quest 4, I think that's where he is? Regardless. Then you have the Goof Off, or the Jester. High luck, high vitality is their bread and butter. Uh, they are a little bit annoying, because A, pros. They become one of the secret classes, the Sage, uh, more easily than the other classes do. You need a particular item or any of the other classes to become a Sage, which is a really, really powerful spellcaster. Problem is, uh, they don't help much. Uh, when you use them in combat, they will do random things. Sometimes they will obey your commands. Sometimes they will simply goof off. Sometimes they'll fall asleep. Sometimes they will run off. It, it makes you question whether or not the sage is worth it. But regardless, then you have the thief. The thief was introduced with the SNES and Game Boy Color versions of the game. They are high agility, good luck characters that uh, will steal from the last enemy that was defeated. It has a chance of it anyways. Uh, the way that stealing in this works weird. Like you can steal something. If it doesn't steal something, they'll drop a medal. Again, Game Boy Color version. And if they don't drop a medal, they will drop the item. It's a little funky. But, you know, I've never really played with the, with the thief at all. Um, that said, Eliza is going to be a warrior. Is this information right? So, the way I say so a lot in this case, uh, when it comes to this information, you kind of want to build your other characters very particularly. In this case, I want Eliza to have a high strength and a high stamina. 9 and 9 for both is pretty good, but I also want to take a look at her HP. 17 is pretty damn good. They will receive some aid from the king. He will he is providing 5 status boosting seeds to aid in their growth. You can either distribute them manually, or I can do it for you at random. If you do choose manual, you can distribute the seeds as you please. If you do at random, you have no control. Yeah, we're going to choose the stats, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to save scum this bit when it comes to these characters, so just give me a hot tick. There we go. As I said, all of the seeds will give you either 1 through 3 for the stats, and in this case, I really wanted to get as high as I could possibly do. So, strength I gave 3 seeds, stamina I gave 2. Seems pretty macho. Okay, I never actually got macho before for her um, thing. What does macho do? Macho murder. Macho or idealist. So she's going to have really decent, um, hmm, really decent strength increase. Okay, agility, really decent vitality. Less intelligence, she doesn't care, and less luck. Again, doesn't really care. Um, yeah, we'll take it. And then we can register another person. In this case, we are going to take Varai. Who is done, male, is going to be a cleric. Mm, eh, no. So we can pretty much just say no and then try to remake the character over and over and over and over again. It's kind of like that in Wizardry as well. If you don't like the character that you are looking at, you can go eh, nah. So we do want a high wisdom and a high agility for this particular character. Uh, because that's kind of how they work. So, yes. We will choose our seeds, and once again, excuse me while I save scum this uh, just a smidgen. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. I only gave two seeds to Wisdom, because he's going to have a high MP count anyways. 
and the rest into agility because um, going first for a cleric is a really good idea. Seems very agile. Okay, never had agile before. Uh, agile have mm, worse strength, worse intel, worse vitality. I'll say worse vitality, agility, or vitality and um, intelligence instead of stamina and wisdom because that's what I'm reading here. But worse luck, but a really good agility. That's not terrible. Again, agility is useful for defense and not getting hit. Yeah. Register again. This time we have a female character by the name of Zita. Now, I want to point out too that some equipment can be uh, is specific to either men or women. Uh, stuff like garter belts, bikinis, boxers, which are men, which are the men equivalent. Uh, and some of them have some really good effects. That said, if you only have women or men in your party, you'll miss out on some of this equipment. This is why I'm deciding to make it so as it's half and half, you know, really strong and a really smart character. In this case, a mage. Let's see. Piddly strength. Without wisdom, though. Yeah, we'll go with this. And once again, saves come time. So in this case, I gave her a lot of wisdom. It was just one seed into agility. And that is because mages, their primary attack phase is going to be just all their MP. Blaze, all that fun stuff. Seems pretty sharp. I don't think I've ever gotten sharp before. Bum, bum, bum. But it is going to be an intelligence-based one. Really, really high intelligence. Meh. Strength. Good agility. But shite, vitality, and not that good luck. Perfect. That is pretty much what we want. Oh, I don't want to register anyone else. No. Don't. No. Uh, did I see that Zita's HP was only a 4? Welcome to Ruta's Tavern. We deal with the with those seeking companions. We will enlist. Now we do have Jose, Sean, and Bet that we could have picked up, but I like to personalize my team. There's Eliza. There's Varai. Okay, I think I was a... T a was reading her attack, not her um, strong. Yeah, she's got 10 HP. <laughs> Scared myself there. And there we go. We are then going to give armor and weapons to everyone else. I love that you can see what their defense increase is like. Because, yes, I give the mage, the better armor at the moment, simply because uh, she's essentially a paper bag. Has the defense of a wet tissue. Give the clubs to the mage and the warrior. And then the cypress stick. The mage. I said mage. Cleric. I give the cleric the club. Uh, we are going to change up tactics a little bit order because I believe how the game works and I'll probably read up and figure out how wrong I am it is going to be the first person line followed by the second then the third then the fourth about who gets attacked during what time so essentially Eliza is going to tank shit for us <laughs> so uh, these green dressed men typically they're the merchants of uh, the <clears throat> words item shop. Not too shabby. Hello, sir. The castle gates close at night. Because of this, you can only receive an audience with the king during the day. The king will save our game. BT dubs. We can use our house to sleep. 
or we can rob for our, our own barrels. I love how this has kind of just become another adventure where Eliza leads the party. Your father, Ortega, was an uh, honorable man. He is my son, Darius, and because you are my grandchild, I believe that you too will become a great hero, just like your father. It's a lot of pressure putting on me. Just saying. Let's see, we have the inn. You rest here for full MP and HP. It will cost more the more party members that you have. So, yeah. It would seem that the man in the front room tried to make a magic ball, but failed. He ended up hurting himself pretty badly. So this, I think, was a mistranslation. In the Game Boy Color version, it's a magic bomb. So. I try one to sail. The far seas. <gasps> I'm sure he's fine. Hello. Alejan once ruled the entire world, but that after the Great War. During the war, all the traveler doors to the other countries were sealed off. Yeah, there are a couple of e-ness when it comes to the translation, but otherwise it's fine. I sure do feel comfortable here in our town. That's why it's so hard to believe that the Archfiend plans on destroying our world. This is the Twitch. That. I have bigger continents than Eliahan in the world. If that's the case, I would really like to travel the world just once before I die. So, here you bring your dead, your poisoned, and your cursed to get them re resurrected, purified, and benedicted. Weird saying it like that. But it does cost money, with resurrection costing the most, and it will only go up in price every single time that you level up. So, you can eventually end up in some sort of a death spiral where it's like, oh no, I died, but I can't resurrect anyone, so I gotta go back and heal someone, but then you lose half your money because you died again, and so on and so forth. Are the son of the brave Ortega? Your father was such an in incredible man. This is a weapon and armor shop. We can buy, go figure, weapons and armor here. Actually, I wonder. Uh, we could sell... Some of the gear we got, but we wouldn't get much for it. Never mind. I was gonna say, I could buy a freaking another sword for Eliza. I'm on guard. Nothing can go, go wrong while I'm on duty. Wish the same luck for you during your travels. Have you seen that island just west of the castle? Yes. That tower is on, on it called Najima Castle. And then, the other bread and butter of this game. The well! No, not the well, but, you know, what's in the well? In here... ...is the Metal Man. It's good to see you again. I collect small metals from around the world. If you collect them for me, I'll give you prizes in return. Hey, you found some. Thank you. This brings Liza's total medals up to one. Once you find five, I'll reward you with a spiny whip. No, you cannot loot the chests behind the mouth shrine. And this is the prize list. Once you bring five, spiny whip, ten, garter belt. Yes, that is a female exclusive item. The blade ring which is a really neat piece of equipment that was introduced for the Game Boy Color and SNES ports. Strength ring, smart glasses, ninja suit, a justice abacus, don't ask, a gale bandana, dragon's claw, vivify staff, the sacred bikini, which is, yes, a bikini, but it is a really damn good piece of equipment, and the golden pass, which I believe the golden pass allows us to use the Pachisi stuff uh, as many times as we want, which is what I really want. Now, I could grind really quickly before the end of this video, uh, but just give me a hot tick. So, we are not yet done here. I mean, we're done in this town for the time being, because what I want to do is come on out to the world. Oh, I don't know what that's about. And find ourselves our first town and our first encounter. 
And then this is pretty much where I get to show you the coolness that is this game. The Blaze animated monsters. I know that's not much of a big deal when it comes to most games nowadays, but come on, this was for the SNES. The SNES, man. Four experience points, it's not terrible. Now what I want to do is I want to hit up the first town before we end up leveling Darius. Uh, of all the party members, Darius is actually going to be the slowest to level up. And that's because he is the only one in the party that is not able to change his character class. Warrior can always change out to be a mage or something. Uh, cleric, same thing. There it is. Now what I want to come here for, though, is more exploration. Welcome to the village of Reeve. Oh, son of a... That's gonna happen a lot. Item shop has... A turban. No one can wield. Well, wear. Holy water. Wing of the Wyvern. Ah, <sighs> someday. Blink, blink. And we can talk with people. This is what I really want. The muscle guide book. You have the thief key? No. There's a cave in this forest south of here which connects to the Jimmy Tower. Rumor has it the old man living in the tower has the key. So, as I said, what your personality is changes what it is that your character is going to level up with. In the case for Darius, who is lonesome, I believe I went over this before, but he does have eh stats. Um, meh, strength, worse, agility, really bad vitality, but his intelligence and luck are pretty much going to be whoop, through the roof, well, relatively speaking. I don't really want that for Darius. Now, what these books allow you to do is you can give them to your party member and then use them. And this will change the character's personality. Darius skimmed through the muscle guide book. The book teaches Darius how to become a powerful individual. It suddenly starts to act like a cocky jock. <laughs> now imagine if you will, if you could literally just change your personality like that with a couple of page flips. I love it. But the jock will have a much, much, much higher strength. Uh, worse agility, really bad intelligence, and sort of bad luck, but average vitality. I say agility or vitality. Bad agility, good-ish vitality. And I wanted to do that change because I like being the heavy hitter as well. You traveled here from Aliahan? Oh, you're looking for the magic ball Bomb. Bomb. It's a bomb. Why is everyone looking for that darn thing anyway? Because it's a bomb. That door's locked. Da -da -da. Now they do have better weapons in there? Yeah, they do have a re better weapon in here. The chainsicle. Any suit, leather armor. Oh, I do need to get them all better leather armor, particularly Eliza. Now here's my... F here's what I love, though. The turtle shell. This is straight off of Mas Master Roshi from Dragon Ball. God, I need to watch Dragon Ball. I, I know I can uh, feel like I'm rushing this part of the game right now, but I really do want to get into the grind really quick so that I can, you know, play. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. This guy. Heave ho! Heave ho! Ugh, it's no use. It's just too heavy. Herp. Another small metal. Well, what strength you surely will come that strength will surely come in handy someday. And this is just the church again. Yep. Now I'm gonna do just a little bit quick of a grind for the remainder next ten minutes or so. So again, I will be using a walkthrough 
uh, not only to figure out where it is I have to go, but also to find many medals, because there are 110 of them throughout the game. You only need, quote unquote, to collect uh, something like a hundred of them for the best reward from the metal guy. Come on. Don't all pile on on Eliza. Thank you. Bonk. I do love being able to hit stuff. And we'll blaze on the Raven. So. Eh. Got into this a little bit before, but uh, test recordings happened. Nine experience points. Yeah. Eliza's level two. Ooh, really good strength buff. Ray is now level two. Good, good MP. Kind of wish he got more HP, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Ah, oh, man, <laughs> that, MP, that HP is sad. But she's in the back for the reason, for that particular reason. I'm gonna do a quick rest. Um, but yeah, when I was test recording, I forgot that I should mention that when you level, uh, when you are fighting, rather, one of the important things to remember is that you will swap out what character, what enemy you're targeting if that group dies. So if you have three slimes and a raven, and the raven dies while someone else targets them, they will swap their target if it's just fight. If you're casting a spell, that spell is going to miss, and you'll waste MP for it. Oof. Zid, stop taking the damage. And again, the hero will level up slower than the rest of the party. This is just gonna happen. Um, <clears throat> and depending on how it is that you have built them... I say built them. Depending on their equipment and all that fun stuff. Oh good, horny hairs. They will pretty much just kind of really go strong. Really strong. A nice in-between of anywhere between the mage and the warrior. Put it that way. They're still dependent on equipment and such, but, you know, it's not terrible. They will be wielding the strongest equipment, so don't worry about that. The only thing you'll need to worry about is whether or not they're going to have as much MP and HP as the rest of the party. Ravens. <coughs> yeah, look at that. Stop taking the damage, though. Ooh. Really hope the next level for Zid gives her some HP. There we go. Level 2 for Darius. 6 HP. Okay, pretty good stamina. And he learns Blades. One of the other things about intelligence that is really important to make note of is the fact that the intelligence also affects when you get those particular, um, when you get spells. Because there's a list that tells you, hey, you get this spell at this point, but depending on your intelligence, that can change. Now, really quickly, I do want to try to return back both by the time it is night. So we're going to dance around Aliahan really quick. After blazing up some birds. <clears throat> Bonk. Yes. Da -da 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 -da. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's so small of a thing, but it's so great of a thing to see the animations. I can't explain it. 
It's just so good. I know that a lot of people uh, prefer to be able to see their, their whole party as well. It doesn't bother me as much. But seeing, like, actual movement in the combat, that enhances the game for me. Might be one of the reasons why I didn't latch on so hard to the first two games. Especially as a, as a kid. Yes. Wiggle. Wiggle, little slime. Hmm, Raya might need a little bit of a pick-me-up. Bonk. Pick yourself up, buddy. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look, look at that MP for Zid. So much MP. I believe of all the characters, Eliza is going to be the one to level up the fastest. Right, there's a level. It's good. Wow, that's actually a particularly great level. And learned Expel. Good. More HP. More wisdom. I didn't mean to enter just yet. Balls. I think that resets the timer too. Heck. That's fine. More slime. So expel makes it so as the enemy gets basically just ejected from the fight. You do not gain experience points and you do not gain money for their ejection. Which is a little bit butts. But I get it. Ring. I think leveling up here is actually faster the Game Boy Color than the Game Boy Color version. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. All I know is that the translation should be close to the Game Boy Color version that we got in the States. Because fan projects and all that fun stuff. Bonk. Yeah, I think it is, because I do not remember getting this much gold this quickly. We'll have one more fight, then we'll pop into the castle. Nighttime is the time of the monsters, so they are going to be more numerous, and we will get stronger ones. But for the most part, it's still relatively easy-ish to fight them. It's just there's more of them. Which is deadly when it does come to situations where it's like... You got a group of three or four that will put you to sleep. Regardless, I think we're doing good. And when you go into the towns at night, there's a different ambiance. We can still go to the inn. Hey there, lad. I met you at the saloon today. No, you didn't. Well, I had a great time there today. Nothing beats having a few drinks and gazing at the moon. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate. Got it. Kind of miss doing that. But yeah, that kid that was here before, he's gone now. Nothing was found. <laughs> and nothing in particular. Ah. That's gonna call. Catch me off guard. Small metal. What business do you have with me this late at night? Nothing. It's getting late. Isn't your mother worried about you? I'm afraid of the dark, so I try to fall asleep early. That way, when I wake up, I've completely avoided the darkness of night. Smart kid. Won't lie. Uh, is that only... How many is... How many is that? That'll be three. I'll use those seeds out of... Out of recording of which I'm gonna go to the inn record well not record but call it a night and then call it an episode when we return I will have done some grinding and um hopefully we'll have ourselves had fine adventure god I've been looking forward to this game since I started this whole freaking Dragon Quest marathon 
can't wait to get on with it. But, thank you everyone so very much for watching. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this adventure as much as I know I'm going to absolutely love it. If you guys are looking forward to more of this, consider dropping a like, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. Helps out the channel, lets you know whenever the hell I've dropped a, I've dropped a video. Uh, I do so three times a day, from noon till one Pacific Standard Time. Except on Sundays, because even I need a break sometimes. And if you can want to support the channel a little bit more financial fashion, consider visiting one of the links down in the description below. Every little bit helps, keeps a roof over my head, food in my belly, and goes to upgrading my PC when I finally have, you know, money <laughs> to do anything with. But yeah, thank you everyone so very much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Take care. Cheers.